John Barry here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show, uh, part of the coverage, part and parcel of the worldwide leader in sports. How are you, John? What do you say, Rich? This is great. I'm opening for Johnny Knoxville. You are indeed. You are indeed. What is, fan. What's the most Big dangerous? Fan. What's the what's the what's the thing you love about Knoxville, John? I, I just love those the, the movie. I mean, the stuff that they do is just it's. I don't understand how you can come up with the stuff they come up with. It's amazing. What's the most dangerous thing you've ever done? Uh, well, intentionally or unintentionally. All right. Let's start with unintentionally. Uh, falling off the high dive the wrong way and hitting the pavement rather than the pool. Oh, my God. Whoa. Yeah, that was pretty good. How long of a drop was that, John? Well, what are those, 12, 12 feet or so? Jeez, how old were you? Yeah, uh, six. What? Yeah, right under the grill. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Did yeah, you? Was, did, was... were, were you hospitalized on that, John? I, it, I wasn't, actually. Um my my dad actually was playing tennis uh, nearby and heard the scream and ran up, ran up there and grabbed me and uh, I don't remember where I went from there. Oh, he didn't just tell you to just you know yeah, put, rub put it some off, dirt on it. Dirt <laughs> 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 and what Come about on, in, what about intentionally then? What about intentionally? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I I would say like some cliff jumping or something. I'm okay. you know. I'm not really that much of a danger seeker. <laughs> well, I mean, you're a professional athlete for a very long time, so you you don't want to you don't want to mess with that moneymaker in a way. Uh, <laughs> let's let's talk about this game. I just threw it out there that I game that. game one's the best shot that they're going to have in Oakland. What do you think? I heard, yeah, I, I I guess I would agree that it's their best shot. I don't know that I particularly like the shot that they have. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um, I just did the whole Eastern Conference series, and um, LeBron's incredible. We all know this, and uh, it's it's just amazing that night after night that you just you you just know what you're gonna you're gonna get greatness. I mean, the guy doesn't disappoint. I mean, I guess you could look at Game Five in that last series where he only had 26 and 10 rebounds as his worst game, where he was legitimately tired, and then to back it up with. 46 in game six, 35 in game seven on the road in victories. We know what we're going to get out of him. He's going to be great. Uh, it's the others that uh, is my concern. And when they're bad, they're they're very bad. Uh, they shoot sub-30% from the three-point line. They shoot sub-40% from the field, and they don't score many points. And you can pencil LeBron in for whatever you want. If these other guys don't play and contribute, uh, they're not going to be able to score enough to beat the Warriors because the Warriors are going to score against this Cleveland defense. Yeah, I know. I mean, well, you have to figure they're going to at least not go 0 for 27 from three-point range. Uh, before we continue on in the NBA Finals uh, conversation, I, I got to get my you know thoughts of a shooter, John. I mean, 27 straight missed threes. How the hell did that happen? That's, the a, that's amazing. And you know what? Most of them were quality looks. Now, I know they started pressing, you know, probably down the stretch a little bit. But, I mean, stone cold, wide open looks. And, you know, people say, well, if you're missing that many shots, why do you keep doing it? Well, that's who you are. That's who they've been all season. And to think that that could happen. I, what I saw some one in 72,000 that that could potentially happen or something. Uh uh, it, it's just a, it's a, it's crazy. I mean, to think that that to think that that would happen, uh, no one could ever think that. And I don't, I don't blame Houston. That's the way they play. And uh, you know, unfortunately for them, they didn't make them. I guess the old axiom: live by the three, and die by the three. And they, they, they fell on that sword, man. I, I just still can't believe it. Twenty-seven in a row. Ariza going all for a dozen, uh, breaking <laughs> breaking the all-time record for most attempts without a make. And and they had him. I mean, they had the Warriors kind of dead to rights right there. Now, defensively, they were switching like crazy and made the Warriors look on offense a way that we haven't seen anybody else. You think the Cavs can pull pull that off? They have the personnel. I, I don't. For that? I, I I give Houston a ton of credit with the way they played. Uh, the switching certainly did cause uh, Golden State a bunch of problems. And look, well, by the way, if you switch everything, everyone says, "Well, why is why is Golden State playing ISO ball?" Well, you have to play isolation ball if you switch everything. There's really nothing else you can do. You're just going to try to find the best matchup that you can, and then you're going to hope that that guy can beat that guy. And what happened was, was Houston wasn't helping off. On all the Golden State drives, what typically happens in the regular season or when you play poor teams, they help, and then they kick it. You know, Let's say Steph Curry's going to the lane. They help off off of Clay Thompson in the corner, 
and he kicks it to him, and he makes a three. And it happens time and time and time again. And that just wasn't happening because Houston decided not to do any helping. So that's much what we're going to see tonight. Everybody switches every pick and roll. Uh, but I don't think Cleveland has the personnel that Houston does on the defensive end uh, to be able to stop them. About John Barry here on the Rich Eisen Show. It's interesting you use the phrase the others uh, for those who, who remember the – uh, the pop culture phrase, the others, unfortunately for Cleveland, it's from the movie, uh, from the TV show Lost. Well, it was uh, a good movie, too. Well, yeah. It was that Wahlberg and Will Ferrell. Ah. Wasn't it? Well, it's Land of the Lost, I think, is what you you might be referring to. No, not to. that one. No. Wasn't it the others? Uh, a, oh, a cop I, movie? I see what you're going. Um, so when it comes to the others, we saw the others look superb against Toronto. And then mm-hmm. Jeff Green stepped up from that group of others when Love was out. Love is back now. Who do you think has the matchup favorability for to be the other to step up here, John? Uh, just with those two, or who do I think? Anybody. I, I, now, I'm just what? knowing the matchups. Now, we've seen it three times before, but Iguodala's out. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying uh, tonight might be their best shot. Who do you think from the others can suddenly – is it J.R. Smith that's set up to have uh, something – Positive happen well, finally here. Jr. struggled mightily. Uh, you know what? The key to me, just watching them over the last seven games, was George Hill. Uh, when George Hill plays aggressive, uh, when he takes shots early in the game, uh, they're a different team. And uh, he averaged double figures at home. Uh, didn't play quite as well on the road. Uh, but I think there's a confidence level from George Hill now that that I, I think he was a bit tentative. You know, when you come o- come over and play with LeBron James. It's his show. He's got the ball. You, you, you kind of maybe you're looking over your shoulder whether you should take shots, be aggressive. Uh, you have to defer to LeBron all the time. And I think he finally got to a comfort level where, where he saw that this team is a better team when he plays aggressively. And uh, I think George Hill is a, is a kind of a barometer for Cleveland. He's got to get off to a start early. Uh, and be aggressive, and he can make shots. I think that's a big thing for Cleveland. Have you noticed? I'm I'm just trying. I'm trying to figure out a storyline here where you say the Cleveland Cavaliers have a chance. Give give it to me, John. Why? Do you want Cleveland? Is this? I mean, no. I don't. Some I, roots out there. No, what do you got? Hold on a second. No. Uh, what I'm what I'm saying is I, I don't want to see four in a row, and I don't want to see four out of five. Uh, I I'd like to see this stretch to six. I'd like to see it go back to Cleveland, so they've got an opportunity to maybe take it to a game seven or see what it looks like when when LeBron knows it's entirely possible that he's done there in Cleveland with the fans giving him that sort of appreciation. I, I'd like to see that rather than that moment happen with a four-game sweep, quite honestly, John. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be four games. I mean, when you got a guy like LeBron James, I mean, look, I don't think it's as big as mismatch as people are, are making it out to be. Uh, look, Golden State not as dominant. They went 16-1 and one last year. Yeah, the Warriors yeah. in the playoffs. They're twelve and five right now. Uh, they're they're not the same team uh, for whatever the reason. Uh, maybe the way people are defending them. Uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, they're not the same team. And Cleveland came back from three one in two thousand sixteen. Uh, LeBron LeBron knows what he needs. They know this team. Tyron Lue uh, understands what has to happen to beat this Warrior team. So. I'm stunned at the 12 or 13 point line, whatever it is, in game one. I, I just think that's a ton of points. And before I let you go, what do you think the Rockets should do? They've got a Chris Ball, a Paul contract sitting right there. Uh, it is entirely possible that they could entice a free agent to come, a free agent of note potentially, the one that we've already had a conversation about during this during this uh, hit here, John. What do you think the Rockets should do after a 65 win season ending the way it did? Yeah, I think it's tough. I mean, Chris Paul's 33, wants five years. You're paying him $200 million. Uh, that That's that's tough to swallow when you're sitting there four or five years down the road and he's making 40, 40 mil. Um, I don't think there's a major tweak that needs to happen. I, I don't think it has to be a LeBron James or a Paul George that has to go there. I think it's got to be a guy that can stand there and shoot shots and play defense. I, I don't think that you need another guy that wants to hold the basketball. Uh, you already have two guys that do that. Uh, so it's not much. I think it's uh, a player 
uh, that doesn't have to be an all-star type player that could maybe get Houston over the top. Do you have a burner Twitter account, John? I know you don't have a regular. <laughs> no tweeting for me, Come on. bud. You're not even you're not even on just to see what's what's happening. You don't even have no. one of those accounts to look. No, up, I, okay? I'm. I'm I'm old. My kids tell me I'm a loser, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> okay. So, what do you think is going on in that Sixers locker room right now with the news Man, that happened with Calangelo? It, do you, I mean, I, I don't. So, I don't know the Twitter world. I mean, is this guy nailed or what? I mean, I read what well, I read. He 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 he's he definitely copped to one of the five. Said four of the other five were not him, but was initially told of only two, and the three uh, other ones to come up with a five went from went from public to private, meaning you're not allowed to look at the tweets unless uh, the person allows you to overnight. Mm -hmm. So somebody, uh, something got alerted. So so some way with the ringer alerting the Sixers to ask Colangelo about down. the first two, shut down three other ones, unless that's completely coincidental. And Ooh. then and then the uh, one of the two that was not shut down that he said was told about and said it wasn't his – was found to be tweeting during some of his press conferences. So there is an alibi, if you will, there. Was one, wasn't one of them his son, or he's throwing his son under the bus? Uh, well, he's not throwing anybody under the bus. He is saying he has no idea about the other ones. But there is now a uh, um, rumor that it could be a family member who was tweeting some of this proprietary information out, unbeknownst to him or, or known to him. I don't know. He said he knew nothing about it, John. Can't wait to see how this one turns out. Okay, you're not a, you're not a social media guy at all. Then huh? I'm not. I I don't really do it now. Okay, John. What, like, why would anybody care what I'm doing? I don't care. My kids don't care. <laughs> uh, like, so why would you care if well, I'm going to? I'm not saying the grocery store. Now I'm not saying, hey, I'm going to pick up, you know, uh, some of my gluten free food for my uh, for my diet. I'm not saying That's that. That's exciting. But what I'm saying is, like, you would then say you would be giving opinions about game one during game uh, one. Yeah, that is yeah. what I'm saying it's for. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, I, that's fine. But I'd get myself in trouble if I, you know. Ah. you got to count to ten before you press send. That, right? That's Isn't true. That you have idea? to hover. You have to hover that thumb, man, before you hit send. Yeah. There's no question. Uh, I agree. All right, John. Uh, Knoxville is settled onto the uh, green room couch right now. Gosh, wish I could watch. Well, do you want to? He's he's right there, John. Do you want to say something in Knoxville? Go go for it, John. No, no, I just you know, it was much respect, big fan. There you go. Enjoy the enjoy he's, the stuff. He's got respect for you, John. Oh well, thank you. Much respect to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have no idea who I am. <laughs> do you have an idea who John Barry is, Johnny? It's okay. If... Uh, John Barry is he part of the basketball Barrys? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's oh, a it's okay. a great basketball family. I know who he is. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. Take care, John. Later. You guys, John Barry, everybody. <laughs> that, yeah. was that was close, that was to, close the to the moment when I had John Voight on, close. right? When we got John Voight on through Stephen Bauer's phone, right? Close. We played phone Rolodex with Stephen Bauer, and we got John Voight on live, and I'm like, hey, John, uh, I just want to say hello, right? That was kind of close to that moment right there. Yeah. That was his response right there. Good to see you, Knoxville. How are you doing, brother? Good to see you. Johnny Knoxville, sitting here on the Rich Eisen Show Green Room Couch. Action point in theaters near you starting tomorrow. Funny movie. We'll show you a clip for the TV audience and then a chat with Knoxville when we come back. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.